What's up, Pummel Power Addicts crew? What we're doing today, we're tearing apart a Dana 35. Now, if you guys have been following my channel, you'll um, know that a while back I had to kind of like do an emergency swap between my 91 that's right there and Rust Bucket behind me because the Dana 35 started making a lot of bad noise. So I pulled it out of Rust Bucket, stuck it in, uh, pulled the good one out of Rust Bucket, stuck it in my 91 model. Well, the bad one, we're going to dissect it today. It's not really, I'm not putting it back together. I'm not giving a tutorial on like, this is how you set the pinion preload and all that stuff like that. That's not what we're going into. It's kind of like when I used to do that whatever Wednesdays, in which I'll bring that back eventually whenever life slows down a little bit. But this is kind of like one of those whatever Wednesdays to where the people who don't know what's going on inside of a differential, I'm going to tear it apart, kind of give you guys a play-by-play -play, uh, thing of what's going on inside that rear, rear div. This is the first time you've ever landed on Power Addicts YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe because I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, tool videos. You never really know what kind of videos coming up next. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. You never know. You might just learn something. Let's do this. Look at poor Rust Bucket. Got some patching going on right here. Jeep Cherokee leaves. XJ leaves. Got the stretch going on. And there's the main rig just sitting there looking all bad. Okay, on with the subject. What we're doing here is basically an explanation of what's inside of a differential, ring gear, pinion gear, bearings, um, how you figure out your gear ratio, all that kind of fun stuff. How do you disassemble it? Now, if you think I'm going to reassemble it, probably not because I'm junking this rear end. It's bad. It's the one that came out of that thing when it was a chunk, a chunk, a chunk. And I pulled the rear end out of this one, stuck it in that one, stuck this one in that one so I can roll it around. And now I'm junking this one because I've got an 8.8 .8 going in. So, first thing people says, I see on the forums and Facebook groups is, how do I know what gear ratio I have? Okay, here's the back diff. There's where your um, fill plug is. Right here, if you look real close. 3.07. 307 differential. 307 gear ratio. Now this other stuff is manufacturing BS stuff, but this is the number you look for. 3.07. Uh, see, in the rear end, the rear diff that came out of this, that is now that, says 3.55 to 355. And I've got a set of gears in my shop that are 3.373, uh, 3.73, so on, so on. So it depends on how your Jeep is optioned as to what gears is going to come inside your front and rear diff. So that is one way how you tell what gear ratio it is. Now the next question would be, how do you know if his tag is gone, what gear ratio do I have? That is a good question. Let's figure that one out. Now how's the other way that we can tell the gear ratio? Now if the tag's missing, you don't have the rear differential cover off, but you can get both wheels up off the ground. Let me show you a little trick here. You see I've got a bolt taped to the pinion. You can see right here that I have a lug nut stuck on. So what do you do? Remember, the tag is at 3.07 gear ratio. Watch this and watch this in relation to each other. Now I'm gonna kind of hold my finger at the end of the uh, lug nut. So in relation to turning this, you can see. All right, this is pointing straight up, so we're gonna count one rotation, two rotation, pay attention over here, and three rotations. See? Three turns just right here equals one turn to the wheel. Three to one, uh, 3.07 gear ratio. Pretty simple little way of doing it. Okay, now that I've showed you the tag here, and I've showed you how to do the rotation of the pinion versus the axle to get your uh, gear ratio, now let's move on back here. This right here is your field plug. And basically what it all boils down to, get out of there. Whenever you're putting uh, differential fluid in the diff, you pour it in basically until it runs out and you're good to go. Pretty simple. So. Then when you get done, you push, snap it, back in, done. So to remove the diff cover, you've got a series of bolts run through here. Just get them taken out, half inch or 13 millimeter.
Okay, once you get your lower bow scrap backed up a little bit to create that gap to allow it to drain, back that up a little bit more. Take your screwdriver and you want to find your spot to start splitting your cover loose from the differential. So we've got a little bit of grease going on here. So what you want to do is just crack the case, crack the cover just enough, let the grease out. Now if you just try to take your cover, just pull it off. Imagine that mess right there just going everywhere. It can be interesting to see what's going on inside here because of all of them. It's got that clunk and sound in it. And all the metal I'm seeing in the oil that's laying in the bottom of that drain pan right there. I'll show you guys in just a second as soon as I get these bolts out. Now what kind of surprise are we gonna see up in here? Okay, I don't see nothing totally obvious yet. A little more playing I like. This is what you call backlash. I'm holding the pinion gear up front so it does not turn. And then I'll grab hold of the ring gear. You can see I got a little bit of movement right there. It's probably close, I don't know, ballpark I'm guessing 10, 15 thousands or so. so it's got some backlash going on. But metal flakes all in it right there. Ew. Let's see. Look real close to my end of my finger right there. See those little shiny flakes? Yeah, something is not good inside there, but we're gonna tear it apart and find out what. Real close. Okay, now let's go over the parts inside the uh, differential. We got your ring gear. Here's your carrier system here. And this is where your carrier bearings are. And back hiding back inside there's your pinion gear. Then you got a center pin here that allows the spider gears, these are the spider gears, to ride on. This is a C-clip axle, which means up inside here, there is a C-clip that holds your axles in. Right there, I'm kind of hanging my finger on turning the C-clip. And let's see, let's so find it. Right there is the bolt that holds that pin. So if we remove that bolt right there, remove that bolt, what's gonna happen is it allows that pin right there to come out and those spiders come out and allows you to take your axles out. Because right now, this pin is keeping your axles positioned, pushing them that way and that way because it's in, it won't allow them to come back as you can see that here's the end of one axle, here's the end of the other axle. This center pin doesn't allow that this axle to come this way or this axle to go that way. Therefore, it keeps the C-clips inside the spider gears. And this is what you call an open differential. Meaning, let me wipe the crud off my hands here real quick. Okay, I am turning this axle shaft to my left here. And notice, okay, I'm going to turn it like I'm going forward here. And notice this one's turning backwards. Because this one's rolling forward, turns your spider gears, and rolls this in the other direction. 
Now what would happen in an event that you get some slick spot or you're out wheeling and you get one tire up in the air, what happens is that one, whichever one is your free axle that's hanging up in the air that's not touching the ground anywhere, it'll do nothing but spin versus the one that's on the ground is just going to simply stay there. You're not going to go anywhere. Because watch this. On this axle over here, I'm going to hold the axle. I'm not going to allow it to turn, okay? Then I'm going to turn the pinion as if the drive shaft is turning it and watch what happens. Pay attention to the spider gears. Notice that this axle stayed still, it did not turn, but yet that one stayed turning. Imagine this axle here, this tire for this gear is stuck on the ground, planted, would have traction. This right here is hanging up midair, not touching rock, not touching anything, but it's just sitting here spinning. You're not going anywhere. That is the major, di major issue with open differentials when you're out wheeling. Open diffs are bad whenever you're wheeling. The everyday driving, yeah, they're great because you turn corners easily and all that kind of fun stuff. But for wheeling, open discs are bad. Now the 8.8 .8 that I've got going in my rust bucket, it's a limited slip differential. Whenever come time for me to change the oil stuff in it, I'll take it the cover off, explain the LSD or limited slip differential stuff in it because I don't have the cover off of it at the moment. My Mustang, it also has an 8.8 .8 underneath it, and it's had some serious hard you know, drag launches and it's been abused and it just keeps uh, just keeps going 8.8 is a solid differential versus the Dana 35s that comes underneath these Jeep stock they suck so okay so I've explained the uh, spider gears ring gear pinions hiding back there we'll see it in a little bit your carrier bearings and I showed you I held one axle turned this and you can see like I'm gonna hold this axle here and as if I was turning the pinion to front, I can turn the ring right here. You can see this axle stays put, that one turns, because that wheel right there, that tire, is touching nothing, allowing it to spin, versus this tire stuck on the ground, got traction, but it's not going anywhere. Open differentials, that's what they do. They're designed for road manners, not for wheeling. So, cranking that prop rocket. So what are we gonna do now? Well, Let's get the spider gears out. So in order to do that, we gotta get that bolt. Okay, in order to get that bolt out, quarter inch, 12 point. Got him, got skeeter. Stick it on there. Now, if you had the dry shaft, you know, some holding in place, it would be a little easier. But I'm holding the pinion right now and tap it just to break it loose. And you're not going to use that end. You can only use the 12 point side. Oh, I'm far. Look at all the metal shavings. It's going to be interesting what I find turned loose in this thing. You see that's just a straight pin right here with the threads right here the threads going to the carrier the pin just goes through the pin part and just goes through that pin right there see all the silver flakes it's gonna, it's gonna be surprising well, it's not really surprising that Dana 35 turned loose but it's just gonna be kind of cool to figure out what what did turn loose Nope, 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 not yet, not yet. Ah, crap. There we go. See, what had happened is that pin had failed to slid down. It got lodged in the bottom of the case. I couldn't turn the carrier, so I had to move the carrier to a sweet spot. To where I can push this up. Well, this thing's covered in oil, so let's slick it snot. So I was able finally to push that up 
and then slide it out to where I can get hold of it from out here. All right. Then rotate your, because now your carrier will rotate because that pin's gone. Your spider gears will rotate. So there's one spider gear, and the other will fill down the side here. Other spider gear. Now we're gonna take out this axle here. Take a push in. Now I got my hand over here, like where your brake drum would be. I'm pushing the axle inward, and the C-clip fell off. C-clip. And again, the axle, I just simply, over here where your brake drum is, I pushed it inward to release that C-clip. Now I'm gonna push the axle back out this way. Let's see if I can get that spider gear off. Oh, I got skeeters chewing on my ear. There it goes. I just had to get on the other side and get the leverage on it. Then this spider gear has the teeth right here inside of it that bites onto the axle. Let me pull the axle shaft out and I'll show you. So here's the end of the axle shaft. This sits on it like right there and turns the axle shaft. Then your C-clip sits inside here. This is positioned there so the C-clip cannot fall out. But oftentimes what happens with these differentials here where hard wheeling and they get some real traction what ends up happening you snap the end of the shafts off right here then this whole shaft ends up coming out the side of the axle tubes and you're kind of screwed so you push the axle in take out the c-clip slides right out Ta -da. now we'll reach over top of the camera Push in on this axle. C clip fell out. Down this muck and slimy stuff. Pulling the axle out the end of the tube. And I'm gonna leave it hanging out there so you guys can see from that side. Pull this spider gear out. Examine the spiders. No real wear there. Hmm, curious it is. Honestly, I think it's in the pinion the way it feels. Yeah, I bet you it's in the pinion. I've now eliminated the spiders. Eliminate the spiders. And the center pin's gone. Alrighty, uh, let me get the junk off my hands and I'll uh, grab the camera and show you at the axle end what I was doing. Okay, we're on the axle end here. This, of course, is obviously where your brake drum and all that kind of crap goes. And when I told you I was pushing the axle in to get that C clip out, what I was doing, I was taking the axle, pushing it inward that way. Then I pull that C clip off the, off the axle, which would turn the spider loose. Then I'm able to completely remove the axle all the way out of the housing. Now, let's remove your saddles and let's get the carrier out. Snout wants to rise up, the pinion side. I gotta hold it down while I push down the breaker bar.
We take our saddles off. And we may have to take something and pop them loose. Well, dang. The carrier is supposed to come out that easy. Okay, on the edge of your carrier here, you got these shims which sets your location, so I, should I say, for the carrier left and right or laterally. You can have different uh, style shims inside here. You got the big wide cast iron one here, but you can also have a little thin, you know, within, you know, five thousandths, six thousandths of an inch or whatever. Ouch! Crap! Well, I see what went. Found it, found it, found it. Give me just a second, I'll show you. Yeah, okay. I guess she off. Let me wipe this bearing race off. Okay, that one's good. I actually grabbed the wrong one. Right, here we go. Oh yeah. I was mistaken in thinking it was in the pinion, but it was not. Looks real close at the bearing surface here. Look how it's eat up. See how it's gouged out? Now which would leave the carnage of the bearing. Look at that. Got one missing there. Got to balance the sucker. The cage is crushed. Bearings are chewed up. Look at that. Uh, right here. Yeah, that bearing is shot. So we have now discovered why was this thing making so much noise. When I had that thing in rust, when I had that rear diff in a rust bucket, I had to go across town to get the emissions testing done. Yeah, that thing was snapping, popping. It sounded bad. So, with a pinion, and this is your pinion gear. Notice the helical cuts, how they mesh. Let me zoom back on you a little bit. And zoom down a little bit. Your gears here. Notice how the arc like this, then your helical cuts on the pinion. As you, the pinion meshes with these gears right here, and as it turns, it pushes on these teeth, making it turn. So, all that metal and that oil right there, and turning that, that's kind of pretty. Watch the cosmic colors. But it's not really colors, is it? Swirly silver. Who ever thought carnage could be cute? The oil, metal shavings right there. Heck, even the saddle there is chewed up. This rear end is officially junk. Here's the little shims that went on each end of the carrier. Now, can you tell which one came from where? Hmm, I'll give you a moment to think about it. Look how bad the thing's chewed up. It's got a big groove cut into it. So that whole carrier was doing its number. I'm surprised it didn't take out the spider in the, not spider, but the uh, ring gear and the pinion with that much movement. Just chew it up. Oh no. Alright. Uh, dump the oil out of this thing. It grows. And 
there's a C clip. Alright, let's pull the pinion out of this thing. If we're gonna dissect it, we might as well do it right. 29 millimeter socket. Then you can pull the yoke. If you guys look real close, see something different about that? Look, oh, get up camera. Look, no threads. Look, Ma, no threads. This is the one on one of my past videos where I modified the yoke to take U bolts and get rid of those junky straps. So once you get the pinion nut off, take your pinion and just pull it through. Pinion bearing, which is pressed on by the way, you're not just going to slide it off. Then you get your little crush sleeve. And that's the pinion. There's the race. You got a bearing race right here that that bearing was riding on. There's another bearing way up front here. So aside from pulling all the brake system apart, that's pretty much you know, a rear differential in a nutshell. It's gears, it's bearings, uh, what went wrong with this particular one here. So the brakes now, yes, I could break them down and show you all the parts in there, but I'm gonna do that on a separate video to where how to change brakes on a Jeep Wrangler because my 91 model is acting a little bit silly and my brakes are squeaking. So there will be brake videos coming soon. Let's go over one more way to find your gear ratio. If it doesn't have the tag here, and you don't have easy access to rotate the pinion or whatever. I think that's really still the easiest, but that's just me. Uh, you know, rotate the pinion, then count the revolutions of the axle like I showed you guys a moment ago. There's one other way. Count your teeth. Now, I realize the carrier is going to be in here. Your pinion is going to be in here. So what you basically need to do is on the end of your pinion, you'll need to find some way to mark one of your teeth on the pinion. So whenever you do your count around it, count your teeth. It's like you start, let's see. Clean that one off. So then you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 teeth there. Then you turn around and you count these. And now I counted these because you see that little blade of grass right there? I started with that one. So 43 teeth around it. 14. 14 teeth, 43 teeth. Now, let me show you something. Uh, gotta grab my phone, I got oil all over my hands. So, you take 43 teeth, there, 43, divide that by 14 teeth on here, and equals, there's your gear ratio, 3.07. Just like I showed you guys on the tag here a little while ago. Now, don't always count on this. Let me start finding it on the ring gear. Don't always count on this being there. But if you look right here, real close. 43, 14. 43 teeth on the ring gear. 14 teeth on the pinion. Don't always count on that. But, you no, know, you can roll a sucker around there and you see those numbers say, Oh, yay! I can do, do the math and know what gears you got. So, if those numbers aren't there, count your teeth here. Count your teeth there, divide 43 by 14 or whatever it is differential that you get. Divide those numbers and that'll tell you your gear ratio. If you ever get differential fluid leaking from around the yoke right here, there's your culprit. That seal right there, that's your pinion seal. Change that seal if you get a leak. So I hope you guys found that video informational. Of course it wasn't about how to set the gear backlash and how to set all that you know, preload and all that stuff like that. That will come from a later down, down the road video. This rear end I was going to junk anyway because it's the one that came out of my 91 right there. And it was making a lot of racket. And I wanted to find out what was going on inside of it. Now I could have trashed it a long time ago. But what I wanted to do was um, save the diff so I could do a video for you guys on how to count gear ratios. Show you the tag on the diff or where it's at or turn the, 
pinion and watch the axles, you know, to count the count your gear show, gear ratio like that. I'll get out in a minute. Or count your teeth and get your gear ratio like that. Because that's a very common question on Jeep for, on Jeep forums and um, YouTube, or not YouTube, but uh, Facebook groups and such. So that was a way for me to show you guys how to do the gear ratios. Also, it gave me an opportunity to explain to you the internal parts, spider gears, ring gears, pinion gears, the bearings, all that kind of fun stuff, or how to take out, how to take apart the uh, Dana 35 with taking out the pin, taking out the spider gears, and all that fun stuff. So, you know, I try to make it educational, even though it's more of just a, you know, a vlog as, hey, what happened to this rear end when they finally started making all this noise, you know? So, I try to make it educational for you before I trash the thing. Cool? Sweet. Now, one more thing, just because I showed you guys the gear ratio and how to get all that, don't get hung up because I use a Jeep Wrangler differential. That only works on a Jeep uh, diff. That works on, it could be a Mustang, it could be a Bronco, Chevy truck, it don't matter, or Camaros, Chevelles, Novas. It can work on any of them, front or on your four-wheel drives, front and rear diff. You know, the same method applies. Sometimes the tag's there, sometimes the tag's not. Um, if, as, if the tag's not there, count your pinion in relation to your axle rotation uh, or count your gears you know there there's your methods so just because i use the jeep differential don't get hung up that it only works on jeeps no that pretty much plays across the board on all manufacturer differentials and much like all the videos i do i mean really think about things mechanical mechanical device is a mechanical device one way or another they all pretty much work the same but you know it's yeah there's some differences so whenever you gain the confidence of working on your jeep wrangler because of my videos whenever i read these comments on how much my videos have helped people let that gain confidence in you working on your other cars as well because if you conquered something on these you know yj's these yj's are pretty simple to work on even the tj's aren't too bad but let that instill you in the confidence that you can do something more than just the jeeps venture into other things as well because you're gaining knowledge the more you work on things the more knowledge you gain so don't be afraid to learn new stuff. So everyone, hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.